uh, some shots started to fall, but, you know, kind of being, I guess, relatively in the game in that first half when we weren't shooting it well, you know, you just got to feed our big guys and you got to get easy looks whenever we have them. But we didn't, well, obviously didn't shoot it well. Didn't really shoot it well the whole game, obviously. But, um, but it was a, it was a tough, you know, second half and found a way to win. So um, proud of our guys for fighting through it. Just kind of what got you through the second half there? What changed the game in your favor, you think? Nothing. We just played hard. The first half, we didn't play hard at all. I think we, uh, we like, let them, you know, hit us first, and we just were lethargic, and it was the same thing as the Oakland game. We started out, you know, slow, and um, they capitalized. They played really well in the first half, and in the second half, we had to fight back. We dug ourselves a hole, but um, we started to make shots. We started to get easy looks. We started to get stops. And um, it really helped us moving forward. Just that stretch where you guys got the ball into Zach. Why did that work better in the second half than it did the first half, do you think? I think he was ready to play in the second half. I, I think in the first half he, he wasn't ready to play. He, didn't, he, uh, he had the same easy looks that he had in the second half. He just wasn't finishing them. Um, but in the second half he really came ready to play. And he, uh, you know, he, he played really well. He was able to get easy hooks, easy dunks. Uh, made his free throws, and it really helped us. You had a stretch there early in the second half where you made a bunch in a row, as you have kind of tended to do sometimes. Did you get better look, looks in the second half, or did they just go for you in the second half, or was there anything you can put your finger on there? A little bit of both. I think I had – I don't know how many shots I took in the first half, maybe three threes or four threes, but I thought they were all pretty good looks anyway. I just wasn't – making them um in the second half I think I started off with that corner three and Travion made a really good pass and <clears throat> from there just kind of you know momentum builds and everything like that but I just try to stay aggressive and just try to chip away at their lead and uh you know get scores and stops and you know we ended up doing that just how important how valuable can this be for your team having to win the way you just won yeah it's big it's um it shows us that you know when we play bad we could still uh still get it done. Um, you know, we got to be a lot better from the jump, everything like that. But, um, yeah, it shows a little mental toughness that we might have not had last year, and we were able to, uh, you know, fight our way back into the game and, uh, you know, at least make a game of it. And we got some stops there at the end, and it helped us. I'm good. Thank you, Sasha. Yep, thank you. Sasha. Paul Orton of the Northwest Indiana Times. What, what was it like? You had four DAC players on the court with Steve Helm, Malik McMillan, you and Brandon. What was that local flavor like for you? Yeah, it's really cool. You know, we don't – obviously we don't get to uh, get a chance to play each other often. And, um, you know, we battled – we had some really big battles in high school, obviously. And uh, it was nice to see Steve out there because I haven't seen him in a long time. I know he was on his mission trip and everything. But, um, you know, those guys are really uh, – up key pieces for their team and they played well today. Was it any emotion going up against Valpo? I know they recruited you heavily. Um, was it, was there any, I did, how many other guys did you know that were out there for them? You know, honestly, I, I don't know a lot of them. Um, since I was there being recruited, um, I just really know Malik, to be honest. Um, but I know Blake Bonin, obviously I played high school basketball with him and he's a a volunteer graduate assistant out there. So it was really cool to talk to him earlier and catch up. I haven't seen him in a while. But, um, yeah, obviously there's a, uh, there's a good relationship with those coaches. I talked to uh, Coach Lodich and Coach uh, Gore uh, yesterday during their, their practice. And, um, yeah, it's just good to see those guys. They're, they're great people. They're, um, you know, well coached. And, uh, they're a good team. And as an upperclassman leader, you know, Brandon had kind of a rough game. Well, do you have to say anything to him? What, what kind of – to your young teammate? No, I, I mean, shots don't fall. I mean, it's you. I, I mean, it's you. Just got to move to the next game. You got to learn from your mistake. You got to watch film. You got to, uh, you know, the next practice. You just got to learn from it. And make uh, try not to make those same mistakes again. But you know, I thought I thought shots don't fall. I still thought he made an impact. For, he made a lot of big rebounds down at the end, uh, down in the stretch. Um, you know, he made a positive impact for us. Mike, Sasha, Sasha uh, Mike Furman here. Just, uh, what did Isaiah give you guys the last maybe eight to ten minutes of this game? Oh, uh, he's huge. I, I, uh, I kept telling him I needed all those free throws, and he, uh, he really came through in the clutch for us. And 
you know, he was willing to go get the ball and not shying away from it, um, wanting to be at the free throw line for us and uh, finish the game. He, he made some big stops there on Sackey. He, he's a really quick guard, and he, uh, he played really well down the stretch. How different is that compared to last year's Isaiah? Um, well, I think he's just getting more opportunities. I think it's, it's different when you come in and you sub – you only play in 10 to 15 minutes a game. And I think now it's just a confidence thing. I think he's been, you know, obviously he's, he played 36 minutes tonight. I mean, that's, I think that was the most on our team. And um, being out there, you just kind of get in a groove a little bit. And, um, yeah, that's really all it is. It's nothing nothing different. I, he, he's capable. He was capable of, it, capable of it last year, and now he's just showing it. Thank you. Yep. Anyone else for Sasha? Yeah, it's um, – Yep, go ahead, Toe. Sasha, Joe, Dehonic, first of all, what was the message from either Painter or other leaders on the team during halftime? What was uh, what were the things being said? I mean, nothing really. It's just the same, uh, you know, same strategy. We just weren't playing hard. We just didn't. We just came out really lethargic. We we weren't executing our plays. We were letting them get in the paint. They're getting easy looks, um, easy shots. Um, so in the second half, or in that within that halftime, it was just you know we got to do our job. We got to make sure that we are. Um, getting stops defensively and getting easy looks. And it started to happen a little bit more for us in the second half. Having four players ending the game in foul trouble, did that at all limit what you were able to do offensively? Or was that more just a product of your performance in general? I'm sorry, can you repeat that? Having four players ending the game in foul trouble, was that limiting at all to what you guys were able to do offensively? No, not really. I think uh, obviously foul trouble is a part of the game and uh, you just kind of kind of have to play through it and everything. But, you know, other people are going to step up in those roles. And I thought I really thought everybody made an impact today. And, uh, you know, it might not show up on the on the point total, but everybody made a positive impact, whether it's rebounding, you know, get over tops, something like that. Thanks, Sasha. Again. Yep. Thank you. Anyone else?